There's a lot of variance among what schools are planning for the fall, and I've been asked by multiple listeners to respond to the question of what schools should be doing in the fall, and many of those questions are centered around what California State University is doing. My answer is probably going to be a little disappointing, because there's just too much variation in the types of schools in the United States and the demographics of their regions to prescribe a truly one-size-fits-all solution. Well, here's where things currently stand as of May 18th, according to the Chronicle of Higher Education. This chart shows that the majority of the more than 600 schools that have announced their plans plan to offer in-person classes. Only 6% say they will offer only online. However, this chart is a little misleading for two reasons. First, it shows a percentage of schools, not students, Included, for example, in that narrow 6% slice of online schools is the massive California State University system, which is the largest system in the United States and serves nearly a half a million students. Second, what really is the difference between the 10% who are waiting to decide and the 10% that are considering a range of scenarios? It would probably be more accurate to lump these two together into a group that hasn't decided. I do think that schools that have announced that they will be entirely online for the fall are probably being a bit premature, but they may have access to information that I simply don't have. I'm, I'm not sure what that would be since presumably the information they're using is in the public domain, but I think we need to respect that we are not privy to their full calculation. Also, the vast majority of those schools are in urban areas that are preoccupied with the impact that a second wave would have, which is understandable. Having said that, I'll make a few other observations. Schools that haven't said what they plan to do in the fall are just failing to plan or at the very least preventing their constituencies from planning. If they actually do have plans and are not sharing them with the public, then shame on them. Schools that have said that they plan to have in-person instruction should present a contingency plan for what they will do if there's a second wave of infection, just so that they are transparent, that in-person instruction is not a guarantee, which of course it is not, and what that plan would be. Most importantly, it's clear from the statements of school officials that have made the decision to offer in-person instruction that that decision is based not on what is best for students, but on enrollment and, more fundamentally, money. Even though residential campuses are the perfect environment for the spread of COVID-19, there's almost no campuses in the United States that could switch to entirely online and not take a substantial hit financially. If that hit is bigger than what the school can absorb, the school goes out of business. I think that for at least a quarter of the schools that have made the decision to offer in-person instruction, the decision was one of simple survival. I appreciate your questions, and I hope this information was helpful to you. I hope you're safe and healthy, and I look forward to speaking with you again next week.